Hello team, this is Dr. Miranda. It is indeed another privilege to spend a few moments with you. Uh, we are going to be going through the uh, Milestone 2 guidelines and rubric for this week's uh, paper. I want uh, to just give you a heads up. My voice is a bit strained uh, as I recover from a nasty little bug. Um, so I am speaking a bit slower than usual. So I want to thank you for your patience uh, as we go through these resources. Also, I'm going to be doing things a bit um, uh, different this week. I'm actually going to be doing some screen capture to show you some really nice resources that I came across to help you uh, in uh, the recalculation of the tariffs and quotas section of the rubric. Okay, And so I'm going to, uh, at this moment, <coughs> excuse me, disengage uh, myself from the video, and I'm going to input in uh, the screen capture so we can uh, be looking at all of these resources. I did a dry run and it seemed to work pretty well. I apologize for the grainy nature <coughs> excuse me, of the screen capture as I tweak some of these settings. Okay. So now I am going to say goodbye to the graphic. Very nice. And I'll be saying goodbye to me to be replaced by the rubric. Voila! Don't you just love technology? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now this is the INT 650 Final Project Milestone 2 Guidelines and Rubric and this is of course the Milestone 2 Guidelines. The prompt is for the first part of the milestone two, you will analyze in detail the trade barriers in your selected international market that impact the industry you have selected. Okay, now, so this is what we're going to do right now, and I'm going to show you some beautiful resources. Okay, uh, but very important, please do not select another company or another country for this particular milestone too, you will need to stay with that company you selected and you're going to have to stay with the country you selected in the industry you selected throughout the project. Please remember that these milestones are simply different sections of <coughs> excuse me the um, same project. So changing um, countries and industries and companies at this point is really not an option. <clears throat> if you do so, you will have to redo Milestone 1 and at this point as we are halfway into the course, it can be very labor intensive. It could overwhelm also uh, the your, your bandwidth Okay, and ability to deliver timely on your project. Okay. So please stay within your selected industry, your selected company, and the selected countries. Okay. Some of you have expressed <coughs> excuse me, concerns because you really have not found any particular trade, import, export, um, specific international trade information for your industry. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, but I'm very happy that we have worked through those issues. Um, there's a lot of data out there, okay? It's just a, a matter of knowing where to look. And uh, as we are dealing with international countries, uh, there are certain places you can go. Uh, I would say start first with the low-hanging fruit. And, and what is that? Uh, those resources that are easier to get. And one of them is to actually look at the website of the trade website for the country you have selected or the countries. And this 
you know, instance, the United States in another country, your target country. It's going to be um, a very um, uh, time-saving effort if you do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Because more than likely, that information will be there because most countries want to attract FDI, foreign direct investment. They want to attract uh, 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 global trade. They want to attract business. So they will, uh, most of the time, put that information and make it available on their uh, respected government websites. So you have to do, do a Google search or Bing search, or whatever search engine you use, you will be able to uh, get that information. Okay. But I want to look at some other resources that you can use, okay, um, that's really going to help you with this particular uh, assignment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Um, I want you to look at the World Trade Organization. We're dealing a lot with the WTO. And the beautiful thing about these organizations is they have tremendous amount of data okay that you can look up okay so if you're having issues finding specific tariff data okay specific information about your industry and what's the quota uh, for specific country I really welcome you to go to the WTO and a look for that information. Now it may take you a little bit of time, okay? But I saved you already a lot of time, okay? Uh, by actually pointing you in the right direction. So you go to the World Trade Organization, okay? And you do a search for tariff data, or you can actually go to Google and put tariff information from the World Trade Organization, and it will take you directly to this page, okay? Um, <clears throat> And I will also make the link available to you when I post this today uh, in our announcements. Okay. Now, so this is a very beautiful set of data set. Okay. You will have to register. You click on tariff analysis online. It'll take you to a registration uh, page. There is no fee at all for that. Okay. Which is good. Um, I had never registered with the WTO before. It was a very easy process. You put in your uh, email address, uh, some information, and you're there. Okay. And basically, <clears throat> you're going to be going to tariff analysis online. You can either look for the information online of the, your specific country, okay, or you can download the data set that's available. So you can do uh, you know, uh, tariff and trade profiles, tariff line duties, tariff averages, principal suppliers. Okay, these are all beautiful, wonderful information. Look over here. You have export subsidies information, and remember, this is something that we're going to have to look into. Okay, so I mean, look at the tariff quotas, commitments on in quota and out of quota duties and volumes of project. Tariff quota. So a lot of the information is already going to be here. You're going to be running. There's reports. Okay, you have applied, you have founds, and then you have queries that you can run. Okay, so it's just a matter of you getting in there. Okay, and running those queries. Okay, now, so this is some beautiful, <clears throat> wonderful data sets that you can use. And look, I, I love that word beautiful because. Data sets is so important, particularly when it comes to trade information, because you are the, you live or die by data. Okay, and it's important to know, particularly if you're in the line of business, where you're going to get that information from. When I was an import and export, <clears throat> and uh, we we did business in Asia, Central America, South America. Um, data was something that was very important to us. We had to know about the quotas. We had to know the tariffs. We had to know uh, what we could import, what we could not import. Okay, uh, so we could figure out the ultimate price uh, for our goods. We also had to know 
what the particular market could uh, uh, accept in terms of, of a price, okay? Um, and the beautiful thing is that we actually covered that uh, last week, at least part of that, when we talked about world price and adjusting quotas and looking at the tariffs and coming up with the calculations. So I really welcome you to, again, revisit those specific uh, uh, calculations because those are going to be very important, okay, particularly when it comes to this. But see, this is how, this is how something that's out there, something that we are studying, something that's in a sense theoretical to some of you who are not in import and export, um, you know, how it all comes together. Okay, so all of this information we had to know. And we had and because it was constantly changing, and so by nineteen ninety seven, when we really jumped on uh the, the World Wide Web bandwagon as a means to leverage additional sales in Asia and in Central and South America, we were able to retrieve a lot of this information and leverage that. As a matter of fact, we were able not to pay certain subscriber services for import and exports because now we could actually data mine uh, the data for ourselves. And now it's even better, okay? Uh, because data is available to you and all you have to do is retrieve it and do a, a, a few set of calculations and, and you're good. The other one is, since we're going to be talking about um, the GDP, let me go back to the milestone, since we're going to be talking about the calculate the effect change of government subsidy on the overall GDP, okay, there's going to be some questions about, oh, where do I get GDP data from? <laughs> okay, where? What's, um, where do I get that from? Well, one of the most amazing pieces of, 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 of free service out there to us is the World Bank Open Data. Okay, and this is a free and open access to global development data. This is an amazing data set. I've used this, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I need to slow down. I feel that strain again with the vocal cords. So basically, this is where you are going to get the GDP, gross domestic product. You can do it by GDP, population, country, okay, or indicator, you know. Brazil, okay, and you have, you know, beautiful data set. Let's see if I can just do a really open, quick query, and you saw that. I put Brazil, comma, GDP, okay, and it's crunching the number, guys. Do you see? It's crunching the number, okay, and it's giving us just some beautiful look from 1960 to 2015, okay? You can see the GDP here on, on a very visual line, okay? Uh, if you want a bar, it'll give you that. If you want map, it'll give you that, okay? Um, a map of the country, but also you can come down here, okay? Uh, and right now, forgive because there's a huge uh, load in the CPU right now. This is an older machine. I had it upgraded. Uh, did the upgrades myself, saved some money, brought some you know new memories, upgraded the whole thing to Windows 10 64 uh, uh, bit uh, architecture. But it's running on an old engine, on an old uh, processor. So, <clears throat> but if you want, download of the whole data okay you can click on download and you will be able to get you know the the gdp look you can actually do the uh, uh other data miners okay you can for example put uh, all sorts of uh, projections for data in here so this is where you will get your GDP. What's the GDP of your selected countries? Okay, uh, we did some contrast and compare, but right now we're doing the country that you have selected. So this is a beautiful uh, data. You don't have to register. Okay, and I will provide for you. Okay, 
um, the actual link for that uh, on today's announcement. The other one is you will have to do a GDP calculation. Okay, usually it's just simple math. Okay, you take the total GDP, subtract it uh, from the actual uh, import. <coughs> excuse me. Um, you know, from the actual. Uh, 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 I want to make sure that I give you the correct information. Okay, from the actual change of the government subsidy. Okay, it's just a. Uh, you, 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 you take the total of subsidy and you, of course, calculate that into the GDP. No big deal. Very simple math. Just subtract it uh, from the overall uh, GDP from the impact. But if you want to do the actual GDP calculation, okay, <clears throat> and, you know, you want to do the import and export, and your import and export figures are already calculated, for the subsidies or the quotas, okay, if you already know that particular data, you can go to GDP calculator at calculator.net. I will have that information for you. This is another piece of information that you can use. You don't have to necessarily use this, okay? This is if you don't want to use the World Bank open data to already see what the GDP is. And you want to refine it a little bit more, okay? Because now you want to use, uh, uh, you know, two different approaches. You have a resource cost income approach or the expenditure approach, okay? And it gives you, of course, um, a little bit more information about GDP. But this is for more refined, okay? Um, personally, I would use the data from the World Bank for the GDP. That's a whole lot faster. It's there. It's already calculated. But if you want to do a little bit more refined search, okay, um, you can go ahead and do that. There's a calculator for you, okay? Now, I understand that this is not quite a very easy set of calculations to do. I want to ask you to please revisit, revisit once again the uh, video calculations, the videos showing how to do the calculations, the materials that were shown. But here I'm going to show you a beautiful little secret, and I'm sure most of you already know this because you're students, and I have been a student once working full time, you know, studying online, uh, pretty much, you know, student led in the sense of. I have to look at the information, I have to learn. And one of the greatest tools, I believe, that helps us students is the videos, particularly YouTube. Now, you have to know what is garbage and what not, what is not garbage, okay? But a majority of the tools on how to figure out uh, the calculations for your imports and effects on tariffs, okay, and subsidies. First of all, we are our, our reading material actually used one of these videos uh, to show you how to do the calculations, okay? But I always like to provide additional material. You don't have to look at it, okay? But folks, I just want to encourage you, okay, uh, that if you are caught and you can't get hold of me for some reason, you're in the crunch, you have a little time, do the search yourself. Okay, now Bing is good because Bing has put together all of these beautiful videos, okay? I did a search on how to calculate the import-export quotas, and it gave me tons of videos on how to do those calculations also. Um, so I want you to uh, continue being resourceful, which you have been since the very beginning of this so course, this okay? So this um, so these are very useful. Some of it is garbage, okay? But I tell you, um, it is good. And I can tell you it's good because the con some of these contents are right on. And our reading material actually used some of this, okay? Um, so please make good use of the Internet. Make good use of our search capabilities uh, that, that we do have, okay? Um, <clears throat> another thing that I have done throughout the years, and it helps me, uh, is um, I don't like reinventing the wheel, 
Nobody does, right? Nobody likes to reinvent something. Nobody likes to waste time because time is very valuable. Okay? Is um, look for Excel, Excel spreadsheets with particular formulas already in them. Those will save you a lot of time. I remember as a project manager, very green project manager. Um, at the time, it was at Citigroup, um, and we were in operational risk and control. And I was tapped to implement um, some new systems that, 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 that we just weighed into. Um, I was very green in terms of project management. I have never done it before, but my uh, manager tapped me to become the project manager for the team to implement you know, these new policies and also um, implement these systems which were going to go live in North America, in Central America, and in Asia. So huge responsibility. And another thing is that at the time the bank was going through severe financial uh, uh, limitations, uh, challenges, and so the purchase for certain software just wasn't in the cards. And so what I've done is, okay, how am I going to do all of this that's needed? I need some software, but the bank right now, at least this department, is not going to spend the money that we need on, on this. So what I've done is, again, went to the internet, resourcefulness. I look for Excel spreadsheets that contain the exact thing that I needed. Um, and guess what? I found it. And I was able to implement it. Beautiful. No problems. And I learned a very, very, very important lesson that day. Is if you want something done, we need to be resourceful and use the amazing resources that the Internet has to offer and spreadsheets, templates, are beautiful. And they come in all sorts of different sorts, you know, size and shapes and functionality. Some you have to pay for it, some you don't have to pay for it. But it will be worth always to look for those whenever you need them to apply to your careers as well, not just for your own schooling, okay? Now, um, these are some of the resources that we have looked at. Um, it's going to be very, very good for you to use those, or some of them, or all of them. It's really up to you. Okay. Now, so let's go again into the rubric and see what they're asking us to do. So the first, first, first part of Milestone 2, you're going to analyze in detail the trade barriers in your selected international market that impact the industry you have selected. Okay, so stick with the company you have selected, stick with the industry, and stick with the country. Please don't change it. Okay. Now, the second part of the assignment is supported by the theory you have described in the trade barrier section. Okay, that is going to be on the first section. Okay, uh, and we're going to talk about that because that's what this is. Okay. You will have to recalculate the impact on your industry based on new numbers you have chosen. Okay. For example, if a tariff is currently 10%, you will adjust it to 15% and 5% and recalculate the impacts. Now, it seems very complicated, but it's really not. Okay. And we'll go into it. So let's go to the first section. Okay. This is a three. Trade barriers. And, and again, I'm going to ask you, you see these trade barriers, the fine trade barriers, okay? You can use these as your headings, but not the entire phrase, please, okay? Choose something that will be applicable to what this is saying. So for me, I would put trade barriers, and then I'll put, uh, you know, trade barriers defined, okay? And then implicate, you know, trade barriers implications to company. So this is going to help you classify the information or put it in very neat categories. It's going to be easier to grade. It's going to actually maximize your point, the available points that you have. Because as a professor, I won't be hunting for this information all over the paper. I have seen those. Sometimes I felt like, you know, Carmen, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? 
I'm like, oh, what? You know, where's Waldo? Um, and it, it, it is something that's very difficult uh, for me. And it's something that can have a negative in, uh, effect, impact on your grade. Okay? Because if we have to hunt for something all over the paper, Okay, it, it could mean that we may miss something because guess what? You we professors are human beings just like you and we can make mistakes. Okay, um, so let's look. Trade barriers. Describe the country's specific trade barriers geared towards foreign MNCs entering the market. This here, you're going to be looking at the specific trade barriers that your country has, your selected country. So if you have India, you're going to talk about the specific trade barriers from India. So you could either use, you could go to the country's uh, website, India, go hunt for trade, okay, and get that information. They most likely will have that information, okay. And if they don't, you could try to find it under the WTO, okay, uh, you know, tariffs and, and, and subsidies and quotas, all that information in here, okay. Now, it's asking for the, for the effects on the foreign, on, on, on the multi multinational companies, okay. If you, again, if you have a startup, stick with the startup, okay. If you have a company that's not yet a multinational, but you believe that this company has tremendous <coughs> excuse me, opportunities to grow in a foreign country, use that company. In other terms, stick with the company you have selected. Okay, uh, So you're going to describe the country's specific trade barriers, and please be sure to use those in-text citations. Okay? Tell me, please, where you're getting this information. It's going to be very important to use those in-text citations because if not, you will uh, uh, your paper is not formally an APA paper and you can lose a lot of points, okay? And also, you run the risk of a technical plagiarism, so you don't want to do that, okay? Because then um, there will be um, some negative consequences in terms of redo, time, so we don't want to go down that route okay now a define trade barriers in your specific international market okay consider drawing from multiple sources in your definition okay now remember this here is tied to this this is your overall overall okay right this is your overall this is, you're going to give a high level summary. High level meaning not very detailed at this point, kind of an overview. And then we're going to get down to the nitty gritty, gritty, excuse me. Okay. So this, you're going to describe, define the trade barriers. Let's say Brazil. You're going to talk about the trade barriers in Brazil, which are many. Okay. Believe me, I tried. To import uh, cachaça, which is almost like tequila, into the U.S., and I have tried to import uh, queijo mineiro, which is kind of a delicacy cheese from my home state. Very proud of that. Actually, it is so tough uh, that in Brazil. Uh, you need a special export license for that, and only from particular sources. It's almost like a mafia because it's so good. Okay, uh, so again, you can go to the WTO for that information, or you can go to your uh, respective country's website uh, to look for what those trade barriers are. Okay, but talk about the trade barriers and narrative. Okay, and again, please use those in-text in, in citations. Then you're going to determine the implications of the trade barriers on your company. You're going to talk about, you know, let's say you, you select Brazil, and, and let's say you have a uh, agricultural companies which exports uh, agricultural machinery, okay? 
And what are the implications of those Brazilian trade barriers on your company? Please be very specific about your company, okay? And then you're going to talk about is, do these trade barriers, do they hinder your company's business, okay? And justify your response. Now, justify doesn't mean, well, because I said so, all right? Or, you know, you simply leave, put a little citation in there. No, talk about, justify your response. Be very, very detailed. The more detailed you are, the better it's going to be. Uh, determine the implications of the trade barriers on your industry. Again, you're going to talk about your company, then you're going to talk about your industry. So if your company sells industrial uh, agricultural products to Brazil, then you're going to talk about then what are the implications of those trade barriers on your particular industry. Okay? And again, do these barriers hinder the industry within the specific international market? Okay, now remember, it went from the impact to on your business now to the impact on the industry and how these barriers hinder, <coughs> excuse me, okay, the, the, your particular industry within that international market. In this case, it's Brazil, okay, uh, or the sample I used was Brazil, the example, but you, of course, have uh, different countries. Okay. Now, D says, determine the implications of the trade barriers on consumers. So, you're going to talk about how these trade barriers, okay, um, in Brazil, or your country that you have selected, you know, how they affect the consumers. This is very important. Unfortunately, I have seen a milestone one that, uh, for some reason or another, um, uh, some papers did not include this information, and it's a big, huge deal because you want to find out how they're going to affect the consumer because, remember, the consumer is the most important element in international trade. Why? Because it is the consumer that's either going to determine whether you're going to have good sales or not. If you don't have a consumer, guess what? You don't have a business, right? <coughs> so it's very important to really define this section here. Okay. Do these barriers hinder the consumer's purchasing power within the specific international market? Okay. So how are consumers in Brazil affected by this? Okay. How are they affected from buying your machinery or your goods okay or your specific products or your specific service how are they hindered by these trade barriers and remember it is the consumer that always pays government doesn't pay they can pay in a sense of you know um, less taxation uh, coming in okay less goods and service less uh, services available for the citizenry lower quality of life, lesser chance of electability. However, <clears throat> it is always the consumer that pays for these things. Aha, now we come to the recalculating parameters. Okay. Okay, select the previously identified trade barriers, which were here on A. And change their parameters for your selected industry, making appropriate economic calculations and representing the changes in chart. Now, you should have access <coughs> um, we use the WTO, okay, their reports, okay. And um let me see if I was able to pull out a report. Okay. Um, okay, I have that information. Let me see if I can get that really quick for you. Okay. Uh, and let's see, right? If I was successful, because I was able to want to keep myself logged in. And yes. Okay. Okay. 
So, okay, we have that. Okay. Right, okay, and you, here you have the, the products, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, you should be able to get that specific data for your industry, okay, from the WTO, okay. If not, uh, you can go to your countries, uh, respective countries' websites. Let me get back here to the milestone, okay. And you are able to get those specific numbers, okay. Again, right, you're going to make those changes for your selected industry. Sometimes they'll give the trade barriers just for a specific section, specific product. Sometimes you will have to estimate. Sometimes you will have to guesstimate. But as long as your figures are based on reality and something close to it, okay, there's not going to be an issue. Okay, and so you are going, again, select the previously identified trade barriers, okay, with the specific numbers, okay, and change the parameters for your selected industry. In some cases, they're going to be there. The tariffs are going to be there. In some cases, they're not. So you're going to guesstimate. What does that mean? Well, let's say you have an industry that's very close to your industry, and they have a number for it. Okay, and so you're basically going to transplant because you're going to say, hey, this is very, very near to what my industry is and what we're doing. <clears throat> you may have to just to tweak it a little bit based on your uh, best judgment. Okay, um, and you're going to have, go ahead and make those economic calculations representing the changes in charts. The same chart that we did last week for the case study okay, can be used for these. Now, calculate the effect of the change of a tariff on your particular industry. Illustrate the change visually in a chart. So you're going to calculate the effect of the tariff, of the change of a tariff in your particular country. Well, the beautiful thing is you already have the numbers from the trade barriers. You have the tariff numbers, okay? And so you're going to calculate the tariff on your particular industry and illustrate the change visually in the chart, just like you did for case study two. Okay. Then you're going to calculate the effect of the change of a quota on your particular industry. Illustrate the change visually in the chart. So instead of a tariff, you're going to calculate the change based on the quota. Okay. And then you're going to look at, calculate the effect of a change of a government subsidy on the overall GDP. And you're going to illustrate the change visually in a chart. Okay, so this should be a very easy uh, uh, section, okay? I understand sometimes the, the, the language and the rubric, uh, we, sometimes it, we can have a tendency of throwing us off, but I don't want you to lose sleep over it or be anxious about it, okay? Um, this is pretty much a continuation of uh, what we learned last week from case study two, okay, and basically now you're going to be calculating the effect of a tariff or a quota in a government subsidy on the overall GDP, and of course now you know where you can go to get the GDP uh, information in here. Look, for the GDP, it's very simple, okay, take the numbers of the the subsidy the total subsidy okay and basically you're going to subtract from the overall GDP okay um, and it's it's something that's very very simple okay um, now again the guidelines for this submission continue the same two to three pages of content okay uh, that of course doesn't include the title or reference pages okay and um, and please use Microsoft Word document, okay, with double spacing, two point, twelve point times new font Roman, Roman font. Look, uh, it has a it has a publisher, and has a writer. I know sometimes it's easy to overlook this. Uh, the best thing to do on your Word document is click on Select All, change the fonts twelve. 
Times New Roman, it does it for the entire document. You don't have to worry about it afterwards. Okay. Now, please include charts in an appendix. The appendix should be after the references. Okay. And there should be at least three scholarly references. Now, scholarly references do, does not apply to Wikipedia. And the reason for that is Wikipedia is not peer reviewed. The peer review process is when you have um, peers academic peers, um, who people with academic credentials who uh, look at a particular article and they judge it, okay, and they do a peer review. So uh, the best place to get these types of documents, folks, one is government sources, okay, not news media. They're not peer reviewed, but government sources, they're peer reviewed, okay, and um, the, uh, you know, Things like what we use, the World Trade Organization data sets, World Bank data sets, those are peer reviewed. Okay. Um, and also on your Shapiro library, there's tons of articles. Okay. Just do a quick search and you'll be able to uh, look at the peer review um, uh, articles there. Okay. Now, um, all references should be cited in APA format. Okay. Now, it's going to be very important that you cite properly in-text citations and reference properly in APA. Please follow all grammar rules of APA and all paper format of APA, all headings in APA, okay, because this is something uh, that you can gain a lot of points on in terms of following the APA guidelines, okay? All right, now we have come, mercifully, <laughs> uh, to the end of our review, okay? And I say mercifully for you, um, because we don't have to take some more of uh, your time for this. Again, these are always optional in terms of uh, the rubric review okay, itself. It's an optional video, but it has some really great uh, resources you can tap into. Well, thank you so much for uh, spending this time with me as we went through the Milestone 2 guidelines and rubric. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. <coughs> Excuse me. And I do wish you a very wonderful day.